Hello guys, today I'm going to show you how to make an inspire graph. There are two types of inspire graphs. You can have an inner inspire graph where the this green gear here is inside the red gear, or you can have an outer inspire graph where the green gear is outside of it. So I'm going to be starting with the inner one. First, I'm going to show you what an inspire graph drawing looks like. Going around. I'm just going to wait. And it's come back to the same point again. So then there are the outer inspire graphs. You can see the outer inspire graph, and I'm going to roll it. The rest is the same. as the green gear is outside the red gear now. Going around and back. You may have noticed that when the green disc is inside the red disc, it rotates counterclockwise, shown in the green line, but it orbits clockwise, shown in the red line. But if I changed it into outer mode, you can see that the green disc rotates clockwise while the center of the green disc orbits clockwise too, as shown in the red. So that is why there is a minus behind inner as they go opposite directions and a plus behind outer as they go the same direction. There are two combinations that you can change that will affect the, the shape of the inspire graph. The first one is the disk size. And the next one is the distance that the hole will be from the center within the size of the disk. And that would be like where you put your pen. So first I'm going to start off with the hole. Maybe I could change it, maybe make it higher. 80, you can see it's different now. And this has moved up. Or I can make it lower, 40. Now it looks different, it looks spiky. And it has moved from around here down to here. There is also a dynamic mode, which can show just lots of them. And I'm going to click. You can see that it's moving further and further off. And the shape is changing. Now it's going, going further and further. Now it's going back down. Now I'm going to show you the effect of changing the, the disk size. M maybe I'll make it higher, like this. You can see that the amount of petals has changed and it looks different than the inspire graph has, looks different now. And the size of the disk is also different. Maybe I'll reduce it. You can see that it has gotten a lot smaller. And the drawing it made also looks different from the one before. I can also make it into a dynamic mode, which will go through all, all the disk sizes. Start. It's getting bigger. You can look at both. This is moving. This is also expanding. Holes are forming. Larger. Larger and larger. Thinner. And back. You may have noticed that 
the disk sizes are in fractions. This is because if they were not in fractions, it might just continue rolling along forever, never to come to the same spot again. The numerator is the amount of rounds it will do. So if I were to go to like a simpler one, like one over three, has only this, does one round and the numerator is one. But if I were to do the one six over 19, it does six rounds and has a lot of petals that point out. Another thing I would like to point out is that the number of teeth here and on the green gear cannot just be any number. Here you could see the amount of teeth they have. The main gear has 98 teeth and the smaller disc has 28 teeth. And if you got the number of smaller gear teeth divided by the number of main gear teeth, you should get 2 over 7. Another thing I'm going to show you is the ultimate dynamic mode, where it will change both the whole percent and the disk size. Starting. You can see that the whole percent is moving along this line, and the number of teeth are changing according to the disk sizes. You can see these two as they change. Now I will show you what it looks like when it's in the outer ultimate mode. Same, the main teeth numbers and disc teeth are changing. Now I'm going to be showing you the math behind making the string graphs. So if this green disc rotated, the distance it rolled over here would be equal to the distance it moved on the red gear over here. The distance it rolled, which here is would be equal to omega times r. And for the main gear, the distance here would be theta times one. So you can see that omega times r is equal to theta times one. And if you wanted to find out what, what omega is, you would move the r over, and it would be omega is equal to theta divided by r what it will be like when the green disc is inside the red disc. It'll be quite similar, but here if it rotates counterclockwise, the center of the green disc will orbit clockwise. So here it would be minus omega times r is equal to theta times one. So omega would be equal to minus theta over r. Before I show you the final equation, I'm going to be showing you that there are three radii. The first one is the distance from the center of the main gear to the edge of the main gear. That has been set to one to reduce the amount of variables. Then there is the radius of the disk, which has been called large r or capital R 
And then there's the distance from the center of the disc to the hole, which is small r. So here, from here to here, will be cosine of theta, and from here to here will be sine of theta. Similar for this, from here to here will be cosine of omega, and from here to here will be sine of omega. Another thing here is that for this one, the distance from the center of the main gear to the center of the disk, here the radius is 1, so 1 plus capital R. And for the other one, where the disk is inside the main gear, it would be 1 minus capital R. The position of the penhole comes from two vectors. One vector from the origin to the center of the disk, another vector from the center of the disk to the penhole. Here we have two vectors. One vector from the origin to the center of the disk, and another vector from the center of the disk to the hole. Vectors we have here can be in polar form. As you can see here, it's the radius and the angle for both of them. But Excel cannot use these. We need to turn them into a form that can be plotted on the Cartesian plane with an x and a y. As I told you that we would be using sine for x and cosine for y. Here is the radius for this vector, and here is the angle for this vector. Same with for the y axis. For this vector, here is its radius, and here is its angle. Same with for this. This should be omega, but we know that omega is, is theta over r. So that was replaced. This part is very similar to the part for the inner gear. It's just that for the inner gear, theta goes in the opposite direction as omega, as you can see here and here with the minuses. And instead of 1 plus capital R, it will be 1 minus capital R. I'm going to wrap up the video for today as it's getting too long. I'm going to show you the coding in Excel part in another video. If you liked it, you can press the thumbs up button. If you dislike it, you can press the thumbs down button. But please let me know why in the comment section. Bye!